Hey folks, this will be a breakout or a subsidiary video for the police bike. I've decided I'm going to replace all the threads, spark plug hole threads in the cylinder head. You know from the main video I did, uh, number two. And I just don't think that these threads are very good. They um, are definitely, definitely, definitely worn out. As you can see here, if I put number four in, That's down pretty far already. Yeah, so you know, this is a police bike. It's been probably serviced a billion times. So essentially what we're gonna do is use the time cert kit. I'm gonna show you number four only, then I'm gonna do number three, and I'm gonna do number one, and then uh, clean everything up, and then we'll be ready to go back to the other video over there. You know, the video over there. Yeah. And then we'll um, go ahead and put uh, the cylinder head back on the bike. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is clean the hole out, blow it out with some uh, brake clean, and, you know, to get any junk out of it. And we're going to relubricate it to cut the threads, but we'll do that here in a minute. All right, with any operation, there's pros and cons. Anything you're going to do. So we'll discuss those briefly. The pros is we have new um, threads, okay? And here's a thread insert right here that we're gonna use. And I ordered a bunch of extras, which is the baggie you saw before, all right? The con is whenever you tap some out, you're removing material. And there ain't a whole lot of room there between the spark plug hole and the, um, the valve seat for the intake valve, all right? And just the way these things are made, just not a lot of room. You can kind of see that there. So we're going to end up cutting some of that out. If you look at number two, you can see that it is a little bit closer. But, you know, you have to weigh the pros and cons. So if we're going to do this, we're going to lose a little material, yes. But is that better than having a spark plug that doesn't screw in properly? And I believe the answer would be yes. So since the head is off and no valves can be open, because there ain't no cam in there, this is real easy to do now in this setting. You know, because when, when you do them otherwise, you gotta make sure that um, you know your intake valve or your exhaust valve isn't open even a little bit. You wanna put it top dead center, but then again, you don't want the piston up too close as well. So it's kind of threading a needle there, and in this case, we don't have to worry about it. So let me show you the kit real quick. It's the time cert kit. It comes with the inserts. These are 16.8 millimeter long, uh, M14 by 1.25 thread pitch, standard spark plug hole. You have a tap that is a step tap. The bottom end, the smaller end, is the um, M14, and the larger end is your thread for your insert. And what that does, of course, is it keeps it aligned best as possible with the existing hole. This is a thread insert driver, which we'll use. This is a counterbore, this is a, I'm sorry, this is essentially a, the driver, uh, you know, extension that you use on this with this uh, bar, like a T-bar. And this guy over here is, put that back right, I guess, is counterbore tool. We're gonna use this to perform two operations at the same time. We're gonna counterbore the aluminum, so the little lip in the time cert fits in, and then the outer part will actually prep a diameter greater than that um, to make it square with what you've already cut in threads um, for the spark plug, the washer, the gasket, because you can't necessarily always get them 100%. So that's what this does. And we'll show you each step. Instructions want you to use cutting fluid such as grease or WD-40. They say to try to catch chips, but we really don't have to worry about chips so much. Uh, we just need to start to tap and then uh, get it straight. And there it is. And we'll load it up with some WD, which by the way makes, WD-40 actually makes really good cutting fluid in aluminum when you're machining it. So there's your pro tip for the day. Yeah, <laughs> some pro. So then what we're gonna do now is we're simply going to um, load up our tool into the driver, 
you know, the driver, I should say, onto the tool. And see if we can get you a little better in there. And then um, we'll load her up with some WD-40. But we're gonna do this by hand with the T-bar that comes with it. Try to keep the thing as straight and even as possible. And then we are going to shove it. All right. And we're gonna end up tapping this down to where the tap is about six mil below the surface of the spark plug. So it's a regular topping, tapping operation. Now the, uh, the tool has a hex up here. I think that's 12 mil. I think on the next ones I may actually do that because you know it's not the easiest thing but it ain't the hardest thing either. And again, we wanna drop the last flute of that tap about a um, quarter inch or six mil down below the surface, about there. All right, so the next operation is we're gonna put this counterbore tool on and we're gonna just slip it right over the tap in, in situ. And that tap acts as a guide. And all you do is turn this until you basically have, basically- Stop talking shit. Have clearance on the top of the, where the spark plug gasket would sit. So you kind of go in there and you'll feel kind of when that hits. And then you can get, uh, you know, get a visual on it. Okay, so I'll show you that now. You started to ease up a little bit because we're just starting to touch um, the surface there. Give you a little better view. So you kind of see we got a little wetness mark. That's not enough. We need to clean that up all the way. So we're just gonna break that surface 360 degrees with the greater, you know, the outer diameter of this um, counter, counter bore tool. Counter, yeah, counter bore tool is really what it is really a counter bore and a facing tool. And what you want to do is try to make sure that you're not driving the tap through as well. Because if the tap comes through, it's going to lose its orientation, which is nice about doing it off the bike because you can kind of hold the tap from the bottom. When you do it in situ on the bike, you just have to take it off more frequently and check. That looks good. I'll show you what I mean. I can get you up in there a little better. So you can kind of see there's now a circle around there. And so now we have contact on that outer surface. So that's kind of a, a proof of, you know, point, if you will, that you have your um, gasket surface for the spark plug is, um, is now where it needs to be. Now actually, we can just go straight through with the tool and just take it out this way. It's easier that way. We're three quarters of the way through anyway. Quarter. And there's your hole with a counter bore and that touch around the outside surface for, um, for the gasket. That looks good. Otherwise, you can't be 100% sure that the gasket is going to seat squarely with the, with the hole anymore, you know? All right. I'm going to go ahead and, although we're going to lubricate this, actually, we're not going to lubricate this. This, this is um, a little bit different than what you may think. We're gonna clean out the threads of this hole really good. All right, and if you look at the instructions, the instructions say to make sure the hole is clean and dry. We want the threads in the hole dry according to instructions. Make sure the hole is clean, there it is, and dry. Lubricate the driver tool with time cert driver oil or 30 weight motor oil and then screw an insert into the prepared hole. So we're not lubricating the insert going in. And you notice they don't talk about any Loctite for these types of inserts, which I thought was kind of unusual, but apparently, you know, they don't say not to use it, but they don't say to use it. So we're not using it. I didn't use it on number two either. So here's the driver tool. 
And what this does is it drives the insert. And you can tell because of the way it is. I'm just gonna use a little three in one because it's just light oil on the driver tool. Now we're gonna go ahead and start the insert in by hand. And you essentially you just go as far as you can before it starts binding up. About right there, starting to get tighter. Now we're almost all the way down, which is good. We should be able to get it most of the way down with the threads the way they are, but sometimes it may bind up a little premature. I hate it when I'm premature. That's bullshit. So we have a lubricated driver tool here. That's what she said. And we have a dry insert and no a Loctite because they say not to use it unless it's a tapered seat. Tapered seat inserts are silver and they need the Loctite um, sealer 6020 on the outside of the insert, but not this one. Doesn't say to use it on this one. So using the wrench provided, rotate the driver through the insert. When the insert is seated, the driver will tighten up. With increased pressure, continue to rotate the driver through the insert. Okay, one quarter or six millimeter until it just loosens up, then back the driver out. Do not screw the driver all the way through the insert. It'll drop into the head. Of course, we don't have to worry about that, but I get where they're going with this. So what this, what this driver tool does is it seats this insert and what we what you put the oil on it for is of course to um, you know to get it to go through as easy as possible so you know the the actual driver tool doesn't do anything to the insert and so that's what we're going to do and as it tightens up it's going to spin it and lock that uh, counter bore in see now it's tightening it up and it kind of spreads it out spread out not quite there yet. Oh, it's still tightening. Ugh. Okay, it's just starting to loosen right there. Okay, good. So now we're definitely, definitely through. Definitely. And we'll just back it out like they say. So it gets really tight for just a three or four turns probably. And then it gets loose and that's when you want to take it out or in our case we could have just keep going I think just shove it through but that's not the way it's designed so that's not the way we're doing it now some guys might disagree with time cert on the red lock type but I'm following the instructions so what happens is the insert here sits just below the surface of the aluminium and remember we have this nice little counter bore area that we touched off on with the with the counter board tool. So now when we put the spark plug in, that's a lot tighter. It's got a good feel to it. And our gasket surface is gonna sit on the aluminum square with the hole. That's the whole purpose of having that um, feature on there. So yeah, that ain't too shabby, pretty easy to do. And uh, now we've got a nice metal looking spark plug hole. Let's look at it from the bottom. Pretty much the same as the other one, number two. And the 16.8 millimeter, um, you know, uh, inserts are the right ones to use for the lengthwise, because this kit, partic this particular kit comes with um, the shorter ones too, which are not good for this. So yeah, um, the 16.8s are the ones we need for this. So, you know, it's, it's best to do it now. Definitely, definitely best to do it now, because we, um, we're really close to the uh, uh, to the um, valve seat where it's pressed in, but like I said, uh, the the other um, the other option is that our spark plug hole is going to fail in the future. And now we've already got the head installed, and now we've got to do a stressful operation in situ, whereas this one's a lot um, easier to do. So what I'm gonna do is I'll put the link in the description from where I got this from, was directly from TimeCert. And I just got some um, more of these 16 point millimeter inserts from a different provider. You can find them from TimeCert or any 16.8 rather, uh, millimeter long ones, M14s from a different source. But it's a nice kit. Uh, TimeCert taps are very high quality. You know, it takes some force to do it. I think on the next one, next two, I'll just use a, um, a ratchet or something on a hex here would be a little easier to do it than the T-bar, but I kind of wanted to show you as it's described in the instructions, at least on one. These inside here are a little more difficult to do because you, got, you have some clearance issues, but in fact you really do want to use a ratchet on those because 
or a socket or a wrench or something because this thing will stick up only so high and then you won't necessarily have 360 rotation with the with the T-bar here. Not 100% sure of that, but I don't know. I, I've slept since I did number two, so I don't remember. So anyway, that's it. I'm gonna complete them all. That's it, it on this breakout video. And then we'll get back on the uh, main video for putting this bike back together and getting it running.